My entire home network is running the TP-Link Omada system. I have the ER605, I think is what it is, as a router, and then multiple Omada switches, all controlled by a software-defined network controller. This controller is currently living on a VM, actually living on a Linux container within Proxmox on my virtual server host, my VM host. I'm gonna be making some changes to my data center, or I mean home lab, and part of that process is gonna to be to downgrade the servers that this system lives on. So, first step I need to do is get a hardware device, like this one. So I'm going to be migrating Omada Software Defined Network Controller out of a VM and into a physical device. This guy. This is the OC200 by TP-Link, of course, and it's just a hardware controller. So this is going to mimic or do all the things that the VM does, or the container the LXC does currently, but on this little box. So I believe, because I haven't done this before, I believe the first step is to plug it into the network. This is a power over ethernet powered appliance. So it needs to be plugged into a PoE switch. There is a USB, micro USB or mini USB, whatever that is, plug on the back of this if you don't have power over ethernet available, but I do. So I'm gonna go plug this into a switch. It should obtain an IP address by default because there's already a set up and running system with DHCP, so an IP address should be assigned to the controller. Once it does, we can go into the existing controller. No, that wouldn't be right. Let's just go plug the damn thing in and see what happens. All right, we can see my home lab here, or data center's worth of a home lab. This is the server the current controller's on, and we're plugging in the new controller. We can see as soon as we plugged in, and this is just plugged in by that one ethernet cable we can see that we've got power and everything and i've got it plugged into this little eight port switch which is poe here if you plug this in and it doesn't automatically turn on like within a second or two go into the existing controller and check the settings you can actually disable power over ethernet on each of these ports individually so that's a good place to start if you need to troubleshoot if it doesn't turn on when you plug it in let's go back and finish setting this up so we've got the OC200 plugged in. I guess it should get assigned an IP address. Let's jump over here to the existing controller. Okay, we can see, interesting. So we'll jump to the site, the dedicated site that we have. And we'll come over to devices. And I don't see our controller listed in devices. Let's go to the PoE switch real quick. Uh, let's see, port number two, we've got that set up on on all. So that's another place you could check for troubleshooting is if it's set up under a different profile or a different VLAN here. Uh, PoE switch port two, there it is. So we can see even on the username, it's the OC200 and probably part of the MAC address or serial numbers and the rest of the name. Change that real quick. There we are. So this is the IP address of the new controller. Let's go there. Boy, that was blinding. So we have to set this up for the first time. All right, let's figure out how to do that. So we can't sign into this yet because we haven't set up the controller yet. Anyway, we have to go through and set up the controller before we can migrate roles from, or sites, from the old controller to the new controller and keep all the settings that come along with that. So one thing I forgot to mention, you're gonna need to take a picture of the label on the bottom of the OC200. It's got essentially a pin number that you'll end up putting in when you set up the controller. So we'll go to omada.tplinkcloud.com. If you don't already have a TP Link Cloud account, you'll come over here to sign up and you'll sign up for an account. If you already have one, then you can just log in here. Logging in takes you essentially to the same controller that you would, or the same access, level of access that you would on the app, but it's here. Now we're gonna go into add controller, hardware controller and integrated router or slash integrated router. Some of the routers have a controller built in. I went cheap, I don't have that. So we'll go to add. We are connected to the internet. 
I'm gonna assume the light is blinking and I'm gonna hit next. Now, this is where you need that device key and put in your I'm not a robot key. Device is offline or powered off or the firmware is incompatible. Eventually. LED on the front of the controller did start flashing. It obviously wasn't before. So now let's try to adopt this again. These stupid captchas suck. Like, I get it, man. I'm not a fucking robot. Can we find another way to get confirmation? Look at that. Look how easy that was. Now what? Yeah, we need to migrate the site from the old controller to the new controller. In order to do that, both controllers need to be on pretty much the same uh, firmware version or, or software version. I guess we have to set it up. Kind of annoying. All right, let's go through the setup wizard and set this up. Two hours later. Now you can do all this in the app. I think this is how I set up originally on the VM controller. All right, so since we created our admin account and our username and everything, now we should be able to just log directly into the controller like we do the one for the VM. So we don't have to do everything through the cloud. Let's refresh that then. Controller ID does not exist. This was supposed to be easy. We can see up here, we've got a new software version available for the controller. I am gonna hit update here for new controller software 2.14.4, and maybe it'll give me the rest of the settings information that I need, I don't know. Release notes, fuck it, let's hit upgrade. Upgrade now. All right, let's do its thing, we'll come back when that's done. Later. Okay, that's better. So, we went through and updated the controller. This is the existing Omada controller on the VM and keep it in light mode so that we can differentiate between the two. Sorry about blinding you, but you can see that the interfaces look a lot more similar now. So we can come down here to settings and under the system settings, which is the main one that pops up, we can see that our controller version is 5.13. Now, if we go to the VM, we can see our controller version is 5.9. So they either both need to be 5.9 or 5.13. I will just upgrade this version to the most recent one so that they both meet 5.13 at least. All right, so apparently to update the version of the controller in a Linux container, you have to do it from the console of the container. So here we are in Proxmox under root. Found this page, well, this page on how to push the update wget-ql. Here is the most recent version. We're gonna do copy link address. So we're gonna do wget-ql. I hope I don't break this shit. Start over from scratch, that would suck. And now we'll let it go through and, oh, hey now. Uh, yeah, so it's saying we should do a backup. So we'll come over here to export data. Oh, that's right, because I stopped the controller, so I can't do that yet. So, no. Let's give it a reboot signal, and it should auto restart the controller after it reboots. Then we need to go in and we need to back up our configuration of the existing site on the controller, really everything in the controller. Okay, where's my, where's my easy button, Omada, TP-Link? Where's my easy button? Uh, the Almada controller, come down to settings, down to maintenance, backup and restore, export to local file, retain user info, yes. Do settings only, yep, and we'll hit export. We'll just put it in the downloads for now. So if we needed to restore, we could. We can go back to our controller, do our wget ql, do a dpkg-i and then just the file name. All right, yeah, we've got our configs backed up. Now we can do the update. Eventually. So now we can go back in. The controller's resetting itself. We have to log back in again. And there we are. Now we go to system settings, 5.13.30.8. Hot damn. Okay, so under global, the settings, migration, start site migration, we'll select the site and export to a local file, which we kind of already did. Uh, we'll just put that in downloads as well. To migrate your site, import the backup file into your target controller. So we'll come over to the OC200, dashboard, site list, import site. We'll do the same name, import from local file and import. 
Sure is taking a hot minute. This is not a smooth, quick process, by the way. Probably could have done a little bit more research before I started this, but yeah, I didn't. Boom. So we've got our default site now, which is default and just comes with it. And we've got our primary site that we migrated. So we'll do confirm. So now we got to migrate devices here. Controller IP address for the new controller is 0.13. So we'll do, the keyboard sucks by the way. And yeah, we're going to import all of the devices, manage or migrate all of our devices from old controller to the new one. Probably gonna lose the internet connection for a minute there. So now we're gonna do migrate devices. Yep, they're all disconnected. Yeah, we can see we've got three switches and one access point that are currently disconnected. And we heard my Bitcoin lottery machine spin up because it lost internet connection. All right, let's wait for us to do its thing and we'll come back. Uh. Okay, that didn't take very long. Five minutes or so, five, eight minutes. All the devices connected pretty quickly. We can see we're on the new controller again because it's in light mode and you're being blinded. The router is the only one uh, where the status said configuring for a little bit longer than the others. Everything else came connected pretty quickly. So now we can come back to the old controller and hit forget devices. So now they're out of the old controller completely and everything's now over in the new controller. Now, so that's good. Let's open a new browser and go to something I don't normally go to. Thingiverse, boom, works. So now we can go back into our primary controller, go to the dashboard, we can see our sites. Ah, we're on the site, so we go back to global. This has been fun, hasn't it? And we can delete the site. So we just hit delete, because now everything's over here. If we go back to global, and while we're here, just to clean things up a little bit, I'm gonna delete default site, because there's no need to have that there anymore. So now, really, we can go in and turn off our, our Omada controller VM over here in Proxmox. Not that it was using any resources, but that's gonna be part of the servers I'm getting rid of. So that's it. I mean, so what did we do today? We installed the new hardware controller, the OC200 device. We updated firmware on the new device and the existing Linux container, the LXC in Proxmox. We migrated the existing site from the LXC to the OC200. We migrated devices from the LXC to the OC200. We turned down the site on the old controller, on the LXC, and now we can decommission. What I'll probably do is just turn off the Linux controller, but let's do that now. We'll come in here to Omada on the controller itself, go into shut down and hit yes. 0%, there we go, we shut down the controller. So now we'll give it a couple days, make sure that nothing funky happens or we have to like revert to an old backup or something. If you made it this far in the video and you learned something today, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel get pushed out to others. And if this is the kind of video that you enjoy watching, consider subscribing to see more like it. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this process. It should have been more straightforward in my opinion. Like. We had to go into the Linux container and do a manual update of the package. It should have just been like, click, update, boop, upgrade, beep, done. But no, I feel like they could have made it a little bit more of an easy button. Maybe something along the lines of sync both controllers with the cloud, with their, their cloud system, and then migrate from there again with the touch of a single, you know, just one button touch. I don't know. I felt like it should have been easier than it was. Either way, of course, thanks for watching.